Let's move it into. Of course, we got to hit our guy Kenny Walker before we get out of here. Just the I Kenny thought you were going to say Travis Etienne, but either one. Kenny Walker update. Still suck at Peter Howard. Um, <laughs> Did you know he had uh, some catches this week? Yeah. Well, imagine Did that. He, cat- he, he has two hands, and then he could <laughs> reach out and catch a football that is thrown his way. Yeah, this crazy. Don't even look at me. I have been fucking RB5. This, you can get off my This nuts. crazy, athletic, really talented guy could catch a football. It's wild. Um, this is all you're asking of Kenny Walker. I just need him to get three targets. He didn't have any in the two-minute drill. I don't give a fuck. And he didn't have a hardly any third down. He picked up He picked up so many third downs for them. First like, downs? Yeah, first downs, yeah. He didn't have any. I don't think he played very many third down snaps. Well, the ones that he did, he ran for a fucking third and one or third and two and got it. They have the they have the third down snaps in the little details of that article, but I couldn't find where third down snaps were in PFF. You can find that shit. Let me know. I was like wanting to find some third down snaps. They only only have in the article. This is all you want from Kenneth Walker, a guy who's going to touch it twenty, carry it twenty times around each game. I just need three checkdowns. I need three checkdowns to possibly get 20 yards or get the PPR. Walker played three of 11 third downs. Or get PPR, um, the PPR touchdowns, like three for 30, the six points. Um, that's all I need. Did you hear me say that? Walker played three of 11 third downs. Got three right. first downs on all of those. Probably did. <laughs> I know it's two of them for sure. You can find out how many first downs they got, but you can't find out how many third down snaps they got. Um Three of eleven. Why they be hiding the deets? But Kenny Walker really, I felt like put this game on ice for for the oh, yeah. Seahawks and has been great and will be great. And this is the kind of shit that I don't understand why you're be everybody's like, oh, you got to sell Kenneth Walker. Well, it's, it's laughable that Kenneth Walker is this RB. There's five Kenneth Walkers in next year's draft. I, I think from, PFF said you need to sell because their schedule's getting hard. From what you said earlier of saying like, who else, you know, who you're going to get? This is the guy you want. Well, you just got a really young guy who's really good on an offense who will absolutely run into the negative game script. Like, that's what you want. Pete Carroll wants to play the ball this way. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is, apparently. Um... Their offensive line's fine. It's okay, and they got some playmakers outside. Kenneth Walker's what you want. I don't. I, I don't understand why you're trying to get out from under Kenneth Walker. You just found something fucking awesome right here. And yeah, okay, you could flash up on the screen like Philip Lindsay and uh, some other player. Maybe is uh, as, as evidence of. I don't know. I don't have anything good there. I don't know where I was going with that. Next thought. Um, I, I just I really don't understand what this the sell Kenneth Walker side is because he just doesn't catch balls and he didn't have a college target share and market share and you're just holding on to that, I guess. How many catches did he have this past week? He had four targets and three receptions for twenty yards. So I saw Josh Norris or man, who was it? Who's the guy's the fantasy guru? Josh Hansen, maybe? No, no idea. I saw a tweet and it was like it said something like um he had Kenneth Walker had three catches this year. That was he had that was more than he had his two years away. He had Forest. three. He had three each year's away at, the, at right. two years Wake Forest. Yeah, and like not able to is different than can't. I or saw that tweet. Not, not rec- I saw uh, that. Not I, asked to. I is saw not that the same as can't. Catch. I saw that tweet too. Right, and the numbers people will say, well, if they weren't throwing it to him, it's be, it's for a reason. It's like, no, Mich- can't Michigan State just didn't fucking throw it to the running back. There wasn't another running back over there that was catching 100 balls. They just didn't do it. He's capable of fucking doing it. It's the dumbest argument ever. Like, it's so fucking silly. I just, I can't understand it. Like, you just, you can have the rules. You can set them all up. You can, you can have all your thresholds. That's fine. But when a guy like this comes along and can do so many special things, you kind of just got to be like, I'm going to just bet on the talent here and I'm pretty sure that he can catch fucking footballs even though he didn't in college like what's the worst case scenario he's Nick Chubb okay how often like we could go back and see what Nick Chubb's ADP and his data was for and the value of Nick Chubb for the first X amount of years in the league it was fucking good that's what it was it was fucking awesome just recently he got shade thrown on him because fucking Kareem Hunt's there and he doesn't catch any balls like, and I'm I'm not say, I'm not I'm not arguing the case for Nick Chubb either. Like I understand why people do bump the value down a little bit, and I could see maybe that Kenneth Walker gets there. But Kenneth Walker catches three balls a game. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
the biggest knock on Chubb is that he's leading the league in he's leading the league in rushing yards and touchdowns, but he's only running back four in points per game. Right, but he's still running oh, back right, four. Exactly. Right. So like I'm that's fine. Like I'll I'll just take a top running back that I got. In the oh first no, I'm getting this. a top five running back. Right. And Kenneth Walker looks to have all the juice. He's plenty fast. I'm seems like he can catch just fine. He's the Seahawks are fine with giving him there's not that many running backs who can get like he's in a system where they want to feature a fucking running back. I just don't understand what's going on. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like it's the same, you know, Damian people are mad still mad at Damian Pierce. Like he's like like he could be well, he could be replaced next year. Yeah, okay. He could be. He's got 24 cool. targets and it's less than half the game so far, so he's on track to get to bust that 50 target threshold. Don't let the liberal media tell you how to think and, and I feel. Mean, he had a great game and he only scored 13, 15 fantasy points this week. That shit happens, man. He's not on a great team, but they're willing to showcase him, willing to feature him as well. He's got good hands. He's been getting uh, carries at the red zone, carries in the goal line, third down attempts, up and up and up. And I, I it just I feel like it's just everybody gets so stuck on they can't he can't do this because of that or now that he is in there he's going to be replaced because he was a fourth round pick or whatever and it's like maybe man maybe but maybe not like why why would they replace him why why i'm not saying they can't i'm just saying like why would you replace damien or uh that's money damien found. pierce right that's money like, found they're mad if you draft a running back in the first round because you could find running backs anywhere, but then you hit on one in the fourth round where I think they want you to take one, <laughs> and they're like, he's replaceable. It's got to be a second or third round running back. That's it. I just, it's just like, what the can't, fuck? Can't be any good if it's in the I'm second I'm sure there's a list round. of a bunch of fourth round players that have been replaced. There's also, I'm sure, a list of fourth round running backs that have played an entire entire career being a starter in the NFL. Like... Just, well, there's probably not a ton, and that's where the numbers come from. You know what I mean, like that. But like, sure, not they're not all created equal. They all don't look the same on the field. NFL GMs make fucking mistakes. Like the team, you know, like if you, I don't know. That's the problem with being like a film guy. Is you have to trust the film guy's eyes who you're listening to. You know, and I think we have a track record here. We've been doing this for so many years that we've found these outliers. We've been finding the outliers, and when we see one, we fucking Plant our flag on it, and I think, I think, you know, let's take Garrett Wilson for example. Offense stinks. We still have Garrett Wilson like semi properly rated, even though he went to a stinky offense. He's just not quite le- quite as highly rated as he maybe could be. He doesn't we, have the up, yeah. Which we kind of talked about. He doesn't have the upside because he plays in a poopy offense. Right. But for whatever, you know, Damian Pierce was just every reason, everything thrown at the book at him that, you know, this offense is terrible. Look at the Jets. Look at how the Jets offense is slowly kind of turning around and maybe could be turning around. Next year, the fucking Texans get C.J. Stroud and maybe he sucks, but maybe he's great. And all of a sudden that's an offense that's like, oh, it's on the come up now. You want the, the, the offensive line seems half decent over there in uh, for the Texans. They've invested some first rounders in there. I think they still have Tunsil. Um, for sure. Dave Tunsil. And there, you know, there's there's a couple of bits and pieces out there, but it's just like we get so involved in well, he's a fourth round pick, he can't do that. He's not he can't play on third downs. He can't do he didn't play at Florida, so why could he play in there? Oh, he's replaceable in the fourth round. Oh, uh he's on the Texans and that offense stinks. Like, you know, th- th- what what are the chances that he's gonna get this many opportunities be down. or what you know, and it's like, okay, in one fucking year that could all be different, and now it seems like he's earned the opportunity to be the the number one guy in that. I'm not saying that they well, the won't add is, another guy. There's not that many offenses in the league that don't have another guy. All those concerns about him aren't necessarily untrue. It doesn't even matter. He's still fucking crushing it. Right. He's still balling out. Had 139 rushing yards last week. There's just no. It just seems like there's just there's there's no adjustment for for guys who. I get it. You you got all the thresholds. You want to be there, but there's no adjustment for guys that like. Oh shit, Damian Pierce was giving you hints of saying he's good. Okay, it took a minute for Penny had to get hurt, but we kind of knew that. And Rashad I, or uh, Kenneth Walker was. I was still fine taking him one two, and it might take a minute for him to get his run. But as soon as he got his run, it's lights out. Like I just I don't I don't understand why it's a rush to sell the get rid of those guys too because basically 
you didn't like him to begin with. So now you got to sell him because it's panning out and it's like, oh, well, it's not gonna, it's not going to keep panning out. I mean, maybe it fucking won't, but I mean, it's not like they've had like a string of lucky things happen to him where like, you know, Kenneth Walker, every game, the guy's shoes are tied together and he just keeps scoring touchdowns. Like it's just, I, he's fucking awesome. Like he ran 22 miles an hour. Isn't that, don't you want the fast guy? Like, I don't, don't you, I, don't you want the running catch. back who gets 26 carries? They need to be fast. They need to catch. They have to have the right size. He didn't like Kenneth Walker because he was going to be on a shit offense. Well, he doesn't look where we're at. Target share. Uh, no, I'm just saying here. like that's what that was definitely a reason. And I'm sure I probably even said like he's on the Seahawks. We don't really know, but we, we think that when it's time to get the usage, they're OK with running the football, which is good. But we everybody like this offense was going to stink. Geno Smith or Drew Locke. And it's like the offense is fucking decent. Yeah. The we Seahawks knew, are we a knew fun the watch. Seahawks wanted to run the ball regardless, you know, regardless of what if they were successful or not with it, they want to run the ball and they want to feature a guy. And that is definitely opportunity that you're looking for. But like, I don't like, I keep, I keep talking shit, but I don't mean to do it as hard as I go in the paint because I want to hear the analytics and I want to know what the metrics are. And I want to know what the probabilities are and all this stuff. But so many people came on here and were like, the target share is bad, therefore he can't be good. Like, there has to be something else to it. It can't just be that. You have to be able to look at this man and tell that he's fucking awesome at running the ball and that he'll figure it out. All he just needs to do is catch a few balls and, like... And get the opportunity. Which you knew that was going to happen. And I don't even want to fight... You don't necessarily ever know that that's going to happen, but you you can play the odds. And I don't even want to... Ar- right, well, you, kn- you knew Seattle wanted to feature a guy, and you knew that Rashad Penny probably wasn't going to stay healthy. So, like, it was a pretty <laughs> good... It was a pretty good scenario for Kenneth Walker to go to the Seahawks. Like, but you didn't want to... All the analytical people blinded themselves with this target share, and I just... I don't know... I want to know if any of them are changing their process at all. No, they're based just, on it. They're doubling you're down just on fine selling. with it hitting. But you're not necessarily like an analytical guy. No, I don't think I you were out on Kenneth Walker because he wasn't going to catch no, passes. No, but I did have a concern about his ability to catch passes. But at this point, why do I care if he if he doesn't catch passes? He catches three passes but runs for 150 damn yards. Right, and he's obviously one of the better backs in the league already, looking looking that right. way anyway. He can put the whole team on his back. He's basically like the new Marshawn Lynch. Right, you just instead of being like so much determination. There's five Kenneth Walkers in the next draft class. Be like, I fucking maybe. Yeah, I don't think maybe there's not. Kenneth Walker. There's not. There's not. There's definitely not. Maybe one or two of them are even better than Kenneth Walker. That would be great for fantasy and for the league and for right. all that kind of shit. Right. But like running backs in general. But there's, if you couldn't see there's, this man, there's for sure maybe. There's for sure maybe one. Right. And it's and it's Bijan and everybody knows it. And it's, after that, I don't know if I would take any of those guys over Kenneth Walker right now. Now you get we get in the off season and we fall in love with all the the yeah, I mean, pretty items that are fresh and new Jameer and Gibbs watching him play, but yeah. like I mean, Gibbs, Tucker, Bigsby. I feel like Gibbs Evans. has got to be Evans. a little bit of a step ahead of all those guys, right? Gibbs, he's got to be yes. like the second, yeah, guy, right? Yeah. And he's I a little so. small, but Ken Flocker was a little small, yeah. Although it's just, short. But then thick up. You and he doesn't all, look small at all. You want all these field. guys who catch passes. How many fucking running backs in this league go out there and are like so effective in the pass catching game? Like four or five? Yeah, not that many. CMC. Swift, when he's out there, could be considered that. Kamara. Yeah. Who am I missing? I'm missing somebody. Saquon. Eckler. Eckler. Eckler and Saquon. You could put those guys in there. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, obviously those are some of your elite players, but like. Anybody else outside of those realms, I'm sure I'm missing somebody. And somebody's like, oh, I'm sure this guy's this guy's good at catching balls or whatever. But like, okay. Like Vermondre. Yeah, Vermondre. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Antonio Gibson was supposed to be a, a ball catching phenom, but yeah. Najee you know. Harris called seventy five balls last year. Right. I just how many of these guys are like these ridiculous pass catchers that get used as ridiculous pass catchers and get you know all the other opportunities like and i don't you can fucking keep, you can keep kenneth, kenneth gainwell and you can keep naheem hines and if that's what james cook's gonna be naheem uh if that's what james cook's gonna be you could probably keep him too you know you can keep any of these fucking daryls who every once in a while well, yeah they, you oh, could start them maybe Darren, and then, maybe darren's or darren's um 
that you can start maybe every once in a while when you're a pitch and yeah, JD McKissick, that that that's great. Like James, sure. James Listen, White. This is another <laughs> issue with a lot of Dynasty Twitter is if like if if you're not a top if you don't check all the fucking boxes and you're not the best, then you're the worst. You know? Like yeah. they don't want these depth players. If you're a fourth round pick, then you must not be any good. I don't want anything to do with you. Right. I'm just not even gonna spend the draft pick. I'll just let you I'll just let my pick get skipped. Cause it's not gonna be a top guy. Right. You know? And it's just like you gotta Everybody stinks except for like five players, basically, is what you're saying. And, and you just need true. to take all of them. Yeah, and I don't know you, you know. need to get five first round startup picks. And take all the top five guys, and then you don't even need to fill out the rest of the flex spots. You'll just be that good. Yeah. Sell the rest of your draft. It's just, it doesn't, it's just, it's just, it's just like, come I mean, on. That'd be a wild idea if you get the first five picks in, in a startup. startup draft. You'd have yeah. to sell all your future rookie picks. You know, I mean, Last Fats basically tried to do that in <laughs> in the the new Patreon league that we started up. Like, he, he's got... He went real top heavy, you know. He took a lot of top men. Is he good? I don't I think, think so. I think he. I think I, he's. I think Swift was one of them. So it's yeah, not working out yeah. for him. But Injuries. like, yeah, it did not work. No, that, just, I think it's a. You, you can't limit. But this is you start so many players in that league, yeah. and I never like to do. I don't like to be so top heavy because if you take a few injuries, then you're really fucking toast. And that's basically as much of a gamble as taking a stab on a later round guy is. I mean. You know, can be. I need some depth. I need, especially in the league where you he's have not like a, four. He's not a playoff flexors. team. Right, he's not a playoff team right if, now. If yeah, if you're if you're not if you're not a top player at, at every position, then you know people are like you're trash. You got to get him off your team or whatever. And it, like you're right, it is it is. I think it is a big problem in the way that people talk about players and values. And I mean, we're always on here talking about buy, sell, hold. Look, I'm not necessarily in. You know, I'm always sending offers if I have free time. But like, I'm not just doing that to do it i'm trying to find the little bits of value that i could maybe find in that league if if that's not what it took to make you guys listen i would just sit here and talk about football games all day fucking long instead of actually telling saying buy sell hold but that's what everybody wants to hear about so i'm not necessarily advocating to always just be buy selling and holding on every single player you should send out offers when you think there's some good value or depending on what your trades you know on what your team's doing but like you know that that I almost I don't really like talking about it this way, but we you know it's kind of what people like and people want to hear. So it's that's provocative. That's what people it gets the people going. That's what we do, but we try to mix in some you know. No, it's not. It's gross. A little bit more football talk on, on throughout some of this rather than just strictly fantasy and strictly just you know you could apply. I'm going to tell you a secret here. You could apply buy sell hold or trade targets to every or, single player. Um, you know, yeah, basically any of those, you know. We'll just go through the league one day. Buy, sell, hold. Buy, yeah, buy, sell, hold, trade targets, must play, top guys. Those are all everything everybody wants. So anyway, let's get the hell out of here because it's late. I'm tired. Get the Travis, hell out of here. Travis Etienne, still not a sell high. Suck it again, Peter Howard. <laughs> um, that guy's fucking good. So, you know, but Travis that, Etienne. Uh, another one. A, another one. Another one that everybody was just like, Hey, there's like three, four ETNs in this next class, so make sure you sell and get what you can. Like, what the fuck are we doing, man? He looks awesome. He can catch. Maybe it's not how you like him to catch. He can catch just fine. Shut up. Fucking do it just fine. He can do it just fine. He's explosive as fuck. Their offensive line looks good. They got to figure out how to win. Jury's still a little bit out on they T-Law. They figured out how to this past week. They play did. the Raiders. They just played the Raiders. The they just played the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, they tried to give that game away. Somehow, Devontae Adams went. All the, all his work was in the first half. It was yeah. wild. People anyway. don't think that, that ETN CMC, so you got to sell him because he stinks and there's five guys better than him in the next class. And it's like, no, you, no, 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 no. There's a, this guy was, had been really good in college. He's probably stayed a year too long. You guys got sick of him. You made up reasons why he wasn't good, and Lateral. he's actually good. Lateral and he's agility. showing it to you right here, so much so that they moved off of James Robinson to feature him. And he's fucking doing his goddamn thing. No, it's not time to sell high. Get the fuck out of here. You got a good player. Should have bought five, four or five weeks ago. Yeah, when you told when 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 y'all told him to. Like, I feel so vindicated. 
look, I mean, we have plenty of misses. I hope people come out there and say, suck it, FF Dynasty on their fucking podcast, because I don't give a fuck. We're having fun. We're enjoying things. And I don't listen to your podcast. Right. I don't <laughs> listen to any of their podcasts. I just I know the, the dumb shit that people say on Twitter. I don't and I kind of have some inside information on who does what in the industry leagues that other people are in that aren't very good at things. Um, if y'all could just hear so. the post interviews we have and talks with guys <laughs> that we bring on, you know, we, we, uh, we, 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 uh, you know, full disclosure. I decided it's that fun. I think dynasty fantasy football has basically just become off seasons talking about rookies and then just telling you which guys are the best uh, that are like this, the veterans. And then the rest of it just doesn't matter. So I think that's it. I think that's dynasty fantasy football. Is it, you just say buy, sell, hold. You say buy, you say sell, I say hold. We move on. Well, that's, somebody's got to be upset about it. That's what it is. All right. Suck it, everyone. Hey, Kenny if Walker's if good. You're watching right Damian now. Damian Pierce is good. Our guy, um, John Bauer, he can suck it too. <laughs> Our guy. He won't even come on anymore. Yeah, he's like, ah, I can't. I'm too come busy. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting called out, JB. You better come on the show soon. We miss you, man. Anyway, I, I miss you. <laughs> yeah, it's like Matt Foreman won't even respond to my texts. So like, subscribe, comment. Yeah. Whatever. Hit me with a five star review on the on the iTunes and the Spotify's or the iHeartRadios or the Stitchers or the Podbeans or wherever you throw a five star review. Send me a screenshot of it. I haven't gotten any screenshots. I, I gave out two t shirts. They should be in the mail soon. Hit me up with another uh hit me up with them them reviews. I'll send out another one. I'll do another drawing. Did it all for the nookie. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Appreciate you. Peace. For your pleasure. Pleasure, 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 pleasure. Also, Gabriel walks in. <laughs> I hate analytics and they stink. <laughs> just kidding. We love you. I'm just playing, America. You know I love you.